Hi, this is Joan Hunter. Welcome to another episode of Miracles Happen as we tour around France and we see the historical sites and we see the prophetic sites. So stay tuned. Welcome to Miracles Happen. Joan Hunter has been traveling the world in the healing ministry for more than 45 years. Be aware of what the enemy is trying to do to you and say, no more. She is hosted around the world for healing and miracle services because wherever she goes, miracles happen. Joan shares her tenacious faith and how to pray for the sick. Bringing people here and sending them out to the four corners of the earth. That's my job. She traveled the world with her parents, Charles and Francis Hunter, for over 30 years. I expect a miracle tonight. Joan sees healing, signs, and wonders happen, all in the name of Jesus. And she wants to share this with you. As anointed as I am, so are you. Whether it's filmed on location at Joan Hunter Ministries in Tumball, Texas, or from around the world, you can be sure to hear good news and receive the resounding message that miracles happen. God has anointed in the area of healing, body, mind, soul, spirit, and finances. So stay tuned and join us for today's extraordinary episode of Miracles Happen. God is a God of hope who heals the body, spirit, and soul. Are you ready for your miracle? Miracles Happen. We're gonna take you all over France today, in particular Paris area, show you lots of really neat things, but currently I'm in front of the Louvre, which is the most famous uh, art museum in the world, it is definitely the largest. It encompasses blocks and blocks and blocks and blocks of buildings and memoirs and so forth and paintings. Most of you are familiar with the Mona Lisa. And the Mona Lisa picture was painted and it was here in the museum and it was stolen. And it's kind of an interesting, you know, story of why it was stolen. You know, da Vinci is a, uh, a um, Italian artist. It was here in France. Somebody came and stole it because they wanted, thought it needed to go to Italy. So when it was recovered, it was brought back here. Once it was found, it made the painting really, really famous. Now, I have actually seen the picture of the Mona Lisa. Now, the replicas usually show it, you know, like 24 by 30 or huge, but it was actually only about eight by 10, a very, very small painting of the Mona Lisa, and which is here in this building behind us. And it's kind of an interesting scenario of, they really didn't know how valuable that particular picture was until it was stolen and then returned. And sometimes, there's revelation that we get that that may maybe we have been talked out of, um, you know, like whether the Holy Spirit or whether the anointing or power, uh, different things like that. And so what God wants to do is he wants to resurrect what's on the inside of you and whatever was stolen, he wants to restore. And whatever was stolen, he wants to not just restore one for one, but it's gonna be a whole lot better and make it more valuable than ever that you ever thought would be imaginable. Now, it's kind of an interesting uh, minor scenario that, that kind of relates to this, is I have a friend who came to the ministry and he says, I didn't know how bad I was until I came into one of your meetings and I got so healed and so set free. He says, I thought I was free, but now coming in, and all this, the freedom had really been stolen from him because he thought he was free. How he came in and he got totally, completely set free of his past. He was a Vietnam vet and got free of the, the memories that he had, all different things like that. I just want to encourage you, now's the time to get free and really recognize how valuable you really are. Miracles are happening everywhere, and now you can proclaim it everywhere you go with the Miracles Happen t-shirt and blanket. The t-shirts come in all sizes and a variety of colors, as well as with rhinestones and without. The Miracles Happen t-shirt is available for men and women. Get your shirt today and watch as God opens doors for you to pray for the sick around you. Both the Miracles Happen t-shirts and blanket are a constant reminder for all of us that miracles happen everywhere and check out his healing promises. 
His Healing Promises is a selection of scriptures on healing read by Joan Hunter. If you need encouragement about your healing or faith to trust in God in a difficult time, this is for you. Let your spirit be lifted, your hope restored as you listen to God's healing promises over your life. Go to miraclesappen.tv now to order your Miracles Happen t-shirt, blanket, or your copy of His Healing Promises. Or call 281-789-7500. Here we are in front of the Eiffel Tower. Uh, we try to get a little closer, but it's kind of an interesting thing because you never really know what's going on. Wisdom said to kind of stay away at this point. You think, well, why? Well, there's two or three guys that have actually climbed up in there. They don't know the purpose of why they're climbing up in there at this point. So we're not allowed to go really anywhere near it. But isn't this an absolutely spectacular view? I just look over here and I think that is absolutely majestic and uh, and just amazing and it was built on behalf of the world's fair and then hitler came in took over france wanted it torn down and miraculously it didn't get torn down and it's really an icon i mean on the streets here you see everybody trying to sell you know whether keychains or larger copies of the uh, eiffel tower and you know replicas of it and stuff and it's it's just like when you think of paris what do you think of you think of the eiffel tower so i'm really really glad it didn't get torn down sometimes you need to stand and believe god for things in your life sometimes they need to be torn down but then sometimes there's things when you need to stand your ground and you know that what you're doing is right and and actually many times it will be gone down in history i know some some people try to discourage me from writing a book but I stayed, I wrote my book, and I was determined I was gonna write my book, and I have my books out. And it is is to really honor God on that. And so I just, just I love sharing all the different places that we're going, and uh, and just stay tuned, because we're, we're gonna be going another place here in just a second. Are you in need of a miracle? Well, I was, many years ago, was in a real desperate situation for a miracle. And God healed me. He healed me supernaturally of breast cancer. He healed me of a broken heart. He healed me of financial ruins. And I am so excited to tell you that what God did for me, God wants to do for you. We are here for you. And I want you to contact us so that we can agree in prayer with you so that your miracle is gonna happen. We believe in signs, wonders, and miracles. And you know what? It's great if you can come to service. I can lay hands on you. But if you can't, we are here for you. And we want to pray with you. And it's not like, oh, we want to pray. No, we want to pray with you. We want to intercede with you. We want you to experience a miracle in your own life. Because once again, we believe that miracles happen. And here we are in front of Notre Dame, one of the most famous places and, and churches around the world. Many, many things have happened here. And you know, in fairly recent history, there it was, it was burned, which in my opinion was very, very tragic. It's over 900 years old and it burned. And by now you know that the cross stood, but a lot of the church actually stood and is still there. The money that has poured in because they want to rebuild, I think is just really awesome. And they are rebuilding. Of course, it won't be exactly the same it was what it was, but in some ways it will be better and newer and prettier and cleaner and different things like that. And, and as I was looking at this, I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about the story of this because there was a folklore, potentially partially true, partially not, of the story of the Hunchback of Notre Dame and how he came in here and he uh, was, was the one who rung the bell. And he lived in there and he would ring the bell and ring the bell. They tried to capture him and he kept going sanctuary, sanctuary, sanctuary. And as a result of that, he knew that he was safe in the sanctuary of the church. And sanctuary is a word for freedom. And how ironic it is that our churches today and our ministry headquarters the inside is called the sanctuary, is where people can come and actually get free. 
I just thought that was a neat analogy. And also another analogy is when I went through hell in my own life, and it was like I went through fire, they don't smell like fire, but I went through fire. And after that, I had an opportunity to die, but I made the decision, no, I'm gonna live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. And at that point, God rebuilt my life, rebuilt me into who I am today, much better and doing a whole lot more for God than I ever thought I would in my entire life. And, and I'm, I'm excited about the fact that they are rebuilding rather than tearing the whole thing down because I believe it's going to be absolutely gorgeous beyond words when it gets done. And it will accomplish more than what it did before. And I know it will take a few years, but I'm looking forward to coming back and showing you more of an inside view of Notre Dame. I'm standing in front of the, the statue of Joan of Arc. How awesome is this? And uh, I love her name, of course, which her name actually means God's gift. She was God's gift to France. They have several places in France where you can come and you actually put a lock on. A husband and wife or boyfriend and girlfriend, when they make a commitment one to another, they put a lock on it. You can see there's like literally hundreds of locks here. Each one represents a very, very powerful and strong commitment one to another. And uh, I think we need to do something like this in the church. I think it'd be great. As people get saved, they make a, put the lock on there and say, seal our salvation, Lord. This is a time when we can lock in to what God has for us and make a, a recommitment of our lives to Him. And now we're off to the Arc de Triomphe. And this was built as a memorial to those that have fought in the wars around here. Now underneath this was where there's an, a tomb of the unknown soldier, which signifies and represents and in honor of those in particular that died and they didn't know who they were. It's very similar to ours in Washington, D.C. And this is a built for a monument. It's 164 feet up. And uh, if, if, if you look at the top, there's actual people up there, but we opted not to walk up there. And here we are right in the heart of Paris. And behind me is a beautiful flame that is a replica of the flame on the top of the Statue of Liberty. Now, if you remember history, the Statue of Liberty was a gift from France to America. And so it's a replica of actually on the torch, the flame that was on the torch. And it's the, the flame of liberty is what they call this. Also, right below me is right at the point where Princess Diana died in the automobile accident. It was a very, very traumatic day, traumatic day for France, traumatic day for England uh, in, in her death. And, and I can still remember it, it was very vivid in my mind. And, uh, and it was a very sad day for many people, especially her children. And, uh, and here we have uh, an interesting time. And it's, it's, this is where they chose at this Liberty flame, this is where they chose to be, to make it a memorial, even though it was not originally that way. And even today, there's people that have left flowers there. They've left candles there. They've done different things to honor, even though it has been over 20 years since she passed away, uh, that they're still honoring her here in, in her memory. And, and I just want to take a moment. I remember uh, in, in her own in particular story, uh, especially like a, a basically a, a Cinderella story that from rags to riches, that she was just a very shy little lady and married a prince and at that point became Princess Diana. And, and, I, and we all have an opportunity in just, you know, making a decision what God has called us to do. And different people are gonna come into our life that are gonna help make that happen. So keep your eyes open because you never know who that is. We all have opportunities to overcome. And, and I was kind of reminiscing, um, and, and it's like in the year 2000, I was faced with divorce. Two days after the divorce, I was, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. All of you who are getting ordained, you know that, right? Yes, because yes, you read it in my book, Healing the Heart, okay? And so, and so my life was over. 
you know, and then not a whole lot of churches, especially 20 years ago, would have you come in and speak if you're divorced. Okay. And, uh, and, and, and different opportunities to overcome. And I'm like, well, my life is over. My ministry is over. We lost the church. We lost this. We lost our house. We literally lost everything. Had to start over. And, uh, you know, and me and the girls and, and it was kind of empty nest at the same time. Three of them were in college. One was already out. And, and it was a very, very devastating time given two years to live. That was the year 2000. Okay. Yes. So at that point, I said, no, I'm going to live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. I first of all had myself in the grave, but I had to get myself up out of the grave. And, and going back and, you know, it, this might be, oh, this is great. She's got, a, you know, her 19th book, just like her mother. You know, my mother had 70 books. My mother was a genius IQ. She could sit down at the typewriter and she would go, okay, here's the next manuscript right there. And they wouldn't have to edit a word. They would not have to, there would not be one word misspelled. Hallelujah. (laughs) This doesn't come out that easy for me. I missed the genius train, but that's okay. My brother got on the genius train and I missed that train. But I missed the train, you know, seriously, because in the process of growing up, I was told dumb, stupid, ignorant, retarded, I would never be able to read or write. And I lived that, I lived that my whole life until I was actually in my, oh gosh, I think late 20, late 20, something like that. And I just accepted it because that was a diagnosis from the teacher. And they, I would never learn to read or write. I might be able to wash dishes. Well, as an income, I've washed a lot of dishes. You got four girls. I'm still washing a lot of dishes. Okay. We got, I think 16 people staying at my house. We got bunks everywhere. I mean, it's just, we're having a blast. And in between all this blast here. And, uh, but the thing is, is it what we can succumb to what the world has said over us. We can succumb, but it's like, you know, like talk to the commander, let the commander handle this. Okay. And when you get this revelation, all kinds of incredible things are going to happen to you. And, and sometimes it's easy. Sometimes it's not. And, uh, and I'm going to read an, a story um, and I, I got, I had her write it up. This is about Terry Seacrest. A lot of you know Terry Seacrest. Um, she's been here before. She's an amazing woman. Um, she's very tall. She's somewhere between six foot and six two, somewhere in that general area. And she wanted to get married. She hadn't been married in like you know years and years and years, twenty years. And she really wanted to get married. And a couple people were coming after her for a side benefit of her money. And you can't, you got to be very careful on something like that. And God has sent her the most godly, wonderful man. And they got married a few months ago, which that's not what the point of the story is. That's just a side benefit and hold out for the right one. Okay. And this is like so awesome. This is from her. And she, uh, I, I just, this is really awesome. Now when you're, I'll just, I'll enter in a little bit later. When I was five years old, my mother and father came to us, five children, and said they had a surprise for us. They said they had been saving their money and that each one, we, each one of us could choose exterior, I mean, uh, extracurricular activity, piano lessons or dance lessons. Being the youngest, I got to choose last. My immediate response was, I want to take both. I think she's still that way. My parents lovingly explained that we did not have enough money for both. I chose piano. She's a phenomenal pianist. And it turned out to be a wonderful part of my life, along with playing the flute. But in my heart, I always longed to dance. Once I got married, I had children. There was always seemed to be something missing, something we needed, uh, you know, and, and, but there was, there was just not enough money to, to, to do that. Dancing got pushed to the very back until one day about two years ago. Now she's in her fifties. I woke up in the morning and thought, this is it. If I don't learn to dance now, I never will. Her first reason for learning to dance the waltz was to worship the Lord and dance. 
Another unusual thing happened around this time. I noticed that every time I went to a conference or some kind of some kind, if there was any kind of music at all, especially praise music, all I wanted to do was jump in and dance with no training at all. She was, she was very self-conscious because she's very tall, very long arms, long egg, leg, you know, everything, just long and skinny, okay? And, and she was very, very self-conscious, but in her heart, it would not let her go. She wanted to do it. And so she went to a conference. A man came to her and prophesied over her and said he had a word for her. He said that he had seen me walk past and inquired to the Lord about me. He said that the Lord had responded that this lady lives to praise me. Wow. He said, I'd never heard that. Such an incredible word. So I got to thinking about this idea of dance being a way to praise the Lord. My dream had always been to learn the waltz. I just love watching people waltz. And I even tried to waltz on ice skates when I was little. God bless her. So finally, I got up the courage and signed myself up for ballroom dancing. And before you know it, one day my phone rang. And she, she is the most elegant, one of the most elegant worshipers in dance I've ever seen. I mean, it's so from her heart and it just flows. Okay. And then the phone rang in, on the other end and she says, this was from an organization that was hosting a big gala to help underprivileged children get music lessons. And long story short, it's called Dancing with the Stars. It's a competition in September and they asked if she would consider being a celebrity dancer. She went with me to the Philippines and danced and gave them hope that God will fulfill your dreams. And that was awesome. And it's in the competition, she says, I almost fell off my chair. After months and months of practice, aching feet, avoiding hurricanes, the competition finally took place Saturday night, just the other day. September 14th, I was the oldest dancer there. But to my absolute joy and, surpri and surprise, with her pro dancer coach, Alan, and I won first place. Amen. And there she is. She's the one in red. <laughs> They're all in red. And by far the oldest one there, but it doesn't matter your age. Some of you might be in here in the 70s, 80s years old, but you didn't give up on your dream. And you're here because you have resurrected that dream. And they had three judges, and all three of them gave them a 10. So I want to encourage you, don't give up on your dream, because this is very, very important. Very important, because see, the thing is, you can give up on your dream, and then it's over. You go to heaven, God says, I have so much more for you, but you just opted out. Let me tell you, there is no plan B. Some of you need to hear that. There is no plan B. Some of you go, well, what about, and if this doesn't work, then no, no plan B. Okay, we've got to get our mind centered on what does God want us to do, and that's plan A. But we need to be willing to do what he has called us to do. And, and it takes sacrifice. You know, it takes sacrifice of money, of time, of energy, of soreness in the feet. Like with Terry, dancing for hours with Alan. Just trying to get better. She never thought she would ever enter Dancing with the Stars. For real? Okay, much less win. Because she started dancing, it was like, you know, and then all of a sudden the anointing hit. Some of you are here because your now has arrived. Amen. Amen. I'm sharing a little bit more of my day with you. Now we're ending the day, topping it off with a crepe. I got Nutella, banana, 
and just a little dab of whipping cream and the crepe. And I'm going to have a few bites of this. I'm not gonna eat the whole thing um, because I had a fabulous Italian dinner here, which was amazing. And so the only way to top off the day is to have a crepe that is like so awesome. And I've seen people eating their crepes differently. Some of them pick it up and just put it in their mouth. Some of them go, oh yes. And they wanna eat the whipped cream off first, which is real whipped cream, by the way. So I'm going to probably make you a tad jealous, which I don't mean to do. I'm just sharing an absolutely incredible day with you and topping it off with a crepe. It's much better than it looks, so sorry to tell you that, but I can't lie. So anyway, y'all have a good day. Joan Hunter Ministries travels around the world sharing the healing power of God. Joan Hunter Ministries is touching lives all over the world through live streaming events, books and teachings, and our prayer call center where miracles happen daily. All of this is made possible by your prayers and support. When you partner with Joan Hunter Ministries, you not only bless those who receive the message, but you open a supernatural flow of blessing into your own life. Today is a day that my God's gonna supply all of my needs according to His riches and glory. Today is a day that God's gonna point to me as an example of His incredible wealth to become a monthly partner with Joan Hunter Ministries, call 1-281-789-7500 or go to joanhunter.org. Today is a day of alignment. Today is a day for financial breakthrough. Today is a day for your healing. Today is a day I don't have to wait any longer for the promises. Go to joanhunter.org to give a one-time gift or text any amount you'd like to give to 281-771. 1507. Become a partner with Joan Hunter Ministries today. I want to thank you for watching Miracles Happen. As a thank you today, I want to offer to you an amazing CD, and it's called Beyond Comprehension. Beyond Comprehension. It talks about God's love and how much He loves us, but there's a lot more in there besides that. You can go to miracleshappen.tv, and it's a free download. It's a free MP3 download. And you just fill out the form and the code will be on the bottom of the screen. And I wanna encourage you to do that because there's a lot of revelation uh, on there that even pertains to what we've been talking about today. And I wanna once again, thank you so much for watching and, and we'll see you as we go around the world with Miracles Happen. Miracles Happen. Thanks for watching Miracles Happen. Contact us at miraclesappen.tv or give us a call at 1-281-789-7500 or look for Joan on Facebook at facebook.com slash Joan Hunter. And make sure to join us next week for Miracles Happen. God is a God of hope who heals the body, spirit, and soul. Are you ready for your